I'm Pat Brass. I'm Vinnie Galone. I'm David Levy. And I'm Megan McGullum. And for our group project, we're going to be taking a look inside Gloucester County's only FM radio station, 89.7 WGLS-FM. Um, I'm here with uh, Derek Jones, the assistant station manager for Rowan Radio, 89.7 WGLS-FM. And um, hi, I'm Megan. Megan, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, so would you mind telling me um, what room we are standing in right now? This is the lobby of the radio station, and as you look around, you'll see a lot of the awards we've won over the years, but most importantly, you see here on this wall a lot of the students that have helped out, and you know, you don't get this stuff unless you have good students who can help uh, deliver the goods for you. So we've been around since 1964, and uh, certainly a lot of great people have been through the doors here at Rowan Radio over the years, as you can take a look here on these walls. So uh, what is this room used for? This is one of the more popular rooms here at the station. This is the executive staff office and this is a room often used for reviewing music which is what Maggie here is doing. She's one of our <laughs> word study people and she's going through and review, reviewing some of the music we have. We get a ton of CDs on a weekly and daily basis from music acts, mostly rock music, people and groups looking for airplay, and they'll often send us their stuff before it comes out and is released to the general public. So we get a chance to listen to it a little bit before everyone else, and a lot of the music reviewing process is done back here. Um, some of the other things you want to take a look at in here, you'll notice a pretty much a common denominator when going from room to room, and that's, there are a lot of computers here. And in this room, we have one that is used for something called Metro News. Metro News is a news browser um, that we have that shoots us and feeds us news through a satellite feed, local, national, international stuff, also any entertainment and sports news, stocks, anything you could need to or use to prepare for a show comes through on this computer and this gives DJs a great opportunity to go on air with something to talk about, um, you know, in case they need uh, something to go through with and also for a news program that we have this is one of the main hubs for preparation so that is a key machine for us we also have a soundboard in here to help people listen to sound clips if need be these two computers over here we have that one there that helps us with scheduling our music on an hour-to-hour -hour basis which we do from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. this one here is one of our production units for audio vault so it's a pretty uh, busy room in terms of people coming in and out, people trying to find things to do, people reviewing things, so it's a pretty critical room for usage. Okay, uh, you mentioned Audio Vault. Um, for viewers who do not know what Audio Vault is, uh, can you explain it a little bit? Audio Vault is a system that is used a lot in commercial radio, and radio stations use this to simply store music and play music out on air. So when we go in some of the other rooms, I'll show you Audio Vault as it looks to the DJ as they're running their show. Okay, so I saw on the door that we have now entered the production studio. So can you tell us a little bit about what goes on in here? Sure. This is a pretty important room for a lot of the production behind the scenes work that goes on here at the radio station. We do a lot of interviews in here for our talk shows. We also have a lot of our training sessions in here as well. Um, we train roughly anywhere between uh, 40 to 50 students a year. So we bring them in here and show them how to use the board, use the equipment, and everything that's in here. Um, also, as a part of being in here, we record promotional announcements for shows. We also record grant announcements too. So we have a lot of different usage usages uh, for this room. If you take a look here, Believe it or not, we still show people how to use turntables. So um, the students that come in here and learn the equipment here at the station, we show them how to use turntables. Also, there are some people who come in and pre-record their radio shows. And one of the alums often uses turntables a lot in part of that process. So, um, you know, we have CD players, cassette decks. We have old and new technology here in this room, which is pretty cool because oftentimes what people come in and 
they'll want to have maybe the reels for reel to reel player um, transferred from reel to perhaps some type of digital file so we can turn it into a CD for them. So, you know, we have that going on in here. Also, here is our computer for Audio Vault. And um, like I was explaining in the previous room, the DJs on air have a chance to play music from the Audio Vault system. And the system is set up in kind of a log fashion where you know each moment what you're supposed to be doing. So you'll play maybe a news announcement one minute, music the next, so on and so forth. So this is exactly what the on-air DJ is seeing right now. You got it. Playing. You got it. Uh, this is the exact hour they're looking at and right now they should be playing at about 2.40 in the afternoon. They should be playing uh, the Shy Lights, Have You Seen Her? So uh, that gives you an idea of what you're probably hearing right now on the air. This is where it all happens. Yes. This is the on-air studio. So I guess you can explain a little bit about the you know, DJs, what they do, and the equipment that they use. Well, the on-air studio really isn't fun without people to go on air. This is Robbie. That's Angela. Robbie's finishing up a shift. Angela's going to follow up afterwards. But they're using the same system that we saw in the production studio of Audio Vault and the same log um, that we saw earlier. And the board, the sound board that they're using, pretty similar to what was in the production studio. So a lot of similarities between these two rooms. Also, a couple of turntables in here as well, CD players, cassette decks, more computers. Um, one of the neat features about this room is the fact that, you know, through AIM, we can communicate with the listeners. People will send us requests oftentimes during the nighttime shows, and they'll often, uh, you know, let us know what they think of the show. So we also can take requests in here too via phone. So it's a pretty busy room. Um, the emergency alert system, always popular in radio because that's where we get all our weather alerts and anything else important going on. Um, we have something back here called a uh, Comrex. The Comrex is pretty important because that's what we use to broadcast a lot of our sporting events away from campus. So we do close to 100 sporting events a year and many of those are on the road and oftentimes we have to use a phone line which comes back here to our Comrex and then transfer it out over the air. Interesting that a lot of people didn't know that. Yeah, it's a pretty popular bit of equipment in radio circles. Okay. And um, are these useful too? Yes, uh, these are very useful here. These are some of the playlists, the operating logs, something that's very important. By the way, a quick story here about this mailbox. If you look here, there's a dent right here. Someone's head actually came up uh, soon after they were on air, banged this right here and created this dent on the mailbox. So, was this was a girl uh, by the name of Danielle Capaferi a few years ago. Hopefully no one related to her is watching this. But uh, her head <laughs> dented this mailbox, so we haven't been able to really get rid of that dent ever since. So um, students who are pursuing a career in radio, would you give them any specific advice that uh, maybe you have learned yourself over the years or no advice that other people have given you? Well, I, I think one of the biggest things, especially nowadays with the economy and everything, is always have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket, and that's not to say that you know people going into radio, oh, you'll, you'll never make it, not to give you that talk, but you, know, you want to make sure you can diversify yourself and make yourself stand out versus you know person A or B who has a pretty similar background. There are a lot of people who have radio, television, and film degrees when they leave college, but the ability to present something that looks a little different to a potential employer, I think, would help out a great bit. So um, I think that's one thing I would certainly tell a, a student is you, you don't want to get narrowed uh, or too narrow in your process of, of looking at just one particular concept, whether it's radio or TV or film. You want to try to bounce it out, try to find a couple of things that you can do, and you know, one avenue may lead to another. And I think that's that's one of the things that sometimes gets lost, I think, is that students get that tunnel vision mm -hmm. and don't look around and really think about other things they can contribute towards. So I, I think having some type of backup plan or having other interests, having a minor, I think that's really a big deal for students. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your advice and uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to give us a tour of this facility. And um, it was uh, really great talking to you. And, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us.